What's up, people? I'm uh, doing something that's out of the ordinary here because it's a topic that has come up multiple times on our Sunday live streams, uh, and that is the the red pill movement. You know, the Andrew Tates, the Sneakos, the fucking Jack Murphys, you know, people like that. And one of the things we've never actually gone in depth on this, uh, so. I know what I'm going to say is probably going to piss off a lot of their fans. If you're one of their fans and you're watching me, uh, hopefully you listen to what I'm saying and don't just shoot from the hip and spurt out. So, at the end of the day, just like with anything, there is a grain of truth in everything, right? Even if you disagree with somebody, usually what they're saying has some sort of foundation in, in truth. Uh, and then it just kind of goes from there. And I understand the the appeal and the desire to want to be better, to be a better version of yourself, uh, to be successful, you know, to have a family, stuff like that. The problem is that when that is the message and you start piling all this extra stuff on there on top, it the message disappears, right? So the core of it is still there. The core of it is still correct. But the actual substance has lost its meaning. We see this a lot with like Fresh and Fit, right? I, I've i listened to some of their shows and I'm sitting there going, all right, I can see where they're going with this. But the delivery comes off as, you know, women suck, men good. It, it, it just, it gets muddled, right? You don't have to do all that. And... To be honest with you, I, I get why they have a following. I understand why Andrew Tate has a following and Sneeko and Fresh and Fit and all these other people that have been trying to get this message out there. But it's done in a way where it comes off as a grift almost, right? And I know, like I said, I know this is going to piss some of y'all off, but that's okay. Uh, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. So... The foundation of that is that you should always want to be the best version of yourself, right? If you're unhappy, do what makes you happy. Uh, let's face it, the odds of any of us, even me, you know, I'm an older guy, becoming, you know, just blowing up to the to the levels of the Andrew Tates and Sneakos of the world are, are minuscule, right? So I'm, I'm not going to try and sell that idea to you because I... If it were me, I would sell you something that is obtainable and easily obtainable. Uh, I'm married. I make six figures a year. I have my dogs, my cats. I buy my stuff whenever I want. And I am relatively successful. I, I go to work, come home, chill out. That is obtainable. But that is only obtainable if that is something that you want to do, right? And there's nothing wrong with saying, well, I don't want a family and this, that, and the other. That's fine, too. You don't have to do that. But the core message here is that you want to be the best version of yourself, right? So when you're... You don't need to sell this pickup artist mentality in order to achieve that. There's... There's plenty of ways the only thing that matters is the desire to accomplish something back when i was younger you know i had a fairly decent job in my 20s uh that fell through from there i was working in warehouses doing manual labor shit and one day i decided you know what i'm better than this i don't want to do this anymore so i went and got a it certification and then started asking around hey where can i work and it just so happens that one of my customers, back when I was working retail, said, hey, I need somebody. Here you go. Now I'm in charge. I run the IT department, the only IT department, for a multi-million dollar oil and gas company. Me and one other guy. One guy below me. That is something that I wouldn't have thought possible until I hit bottom of the barrel. Like... Right, when you hit the lowest point in your life where you are worried about money and you're worried about bills 
and you're worried about the car and you're worried about everything else but yourself, right? Once you get to the point where you go, okay, I can do this. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And then you do it. That's it. That's all there is to it, right? Don't let anything fucking stop you at all. Nothing. I say I would stay up studying all night and then going to work the next day. And as soon as I got my certification, I was like, I am done. I'm done making $14 an hour. And it hell, it wasn't even $14 an hour. It was like $13 an hour. And, you know, a lot of people were going, oh, you're not going to do it. Oh, you're not going to make it. Oh, this, that, and the other. You know, watch, watch. He's going to give up. No, you can't do that. You have to tell yourself over and over and over again, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. And that's one of the messages of this whole red pill movement. But then you don't need all this extra crap, right? What I just told you is exactly what you're supposed to do. What you need to do. And I get the, uh, again, I get the appeal of these types of guys. Especially when it comes to women, right? Now, I've been with my wife at this point for 10 years. Uh, every relationship that I've ever been in has been somewhat of a long-term relationship. I've never been in a relationship less than a year. And I've been in maybe six or seven long-term relationships. And it's... You don't need to jump through a lot of hoops, right? And understand that guys lack confidence or guys that uh, feel like they can't talk to people. Look, the, the core of that is if you can talk to people, then you can talk to anybody. And you have to be confident when you talk to someone all the time, just like I'm being confident right now. You have to believe in what you're saying. Don't try and bullshit people. Again, that's one of my major gripes with these guys is that all it is is this layer of bullshit on top of a grain of truth. Don't bullshit people. Speak your mind. Tell the truth. And that's it. That's all you have to do. That is literally all you have to do to be successful with the opposite sex. That's it. I've never had a problem because of that. And if you're trying to obtain, you know, a trophy wife or something, then you got a whole nother set of problems, right? Never, ever, ever get with anybody that is only with you because you can buy them things, ever. Just, that is not good for anybody, <laughs> male or female. Um, you know, I, I wish the red pill movement was something else. I wish it was somebody sitting down and telling guys, okay, this is how you do this. Okay, this is how you do that. Oh, if you have questions, all right, here you go. Here's the answer, right? There's no... There's no cure-all. There's nothing that is, is going to be told to you that is going to have a 100% success rate. I'm not going to charge you 20 bucks a month to spit out advice that may or may not work. You know what I mean? That is that is a grift. And then you hear these guys talk about how you know women are the scum of the earth and awful and you should you know pump and dump and all this other shit. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. Find somebody that you get along with, that you're attracted to, and then you attempt something. If that doesn't work, there's always another one. Now I'm talking about from the standpoint, if my wife is watching this, I'm talking about this from the standpoint of dating, you know, right? And to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to be in the modern day dating pool, current year dating pool. I, I would personally rather go live in a shack in the woods than try to attempt <laughs> dating at this point in time. You know, it didn't always used to be like that, but it is now. And, you know, you don't have to try. Someone will always come along and be like, you know what? I get along with this person. I like them. I like hanging out with them. I like talking to them. And then you see what happens, right? You can't force anything. You can't make somebody like you. If they don't like you, oh, I just want to be friends, whatever. Okay, you move on. It's not this crushing defeat that all these guys talk about whenever they get turned down. Okay. 
whatever. Now, if it does feel like a crushing defeat, then you have self-esteem issues that you need to work on. You know, find the triggers. What makes me upset? You know, why did this bother me so much? Like, what, what did I do here that was where I feel I went wrong? You know, you have to be prone for all of this. You have to be prone to introspection and realizing where, where your weaknesses are, what your problems are, where you, for the longest time, I had a problem with public speaking, with making eye contact, with looking people in the eye and talking to them. I could not do that when I was younger at all. Uh, that's something from my childhood, I don't know, but at one point I ended up forcing myself to do stuff like that so I could get over it. And I did. It's, it's sad because I, as I was starting to mention, I really wish that there was somebody out there that was just straight to the point and told young guys how it is. You know, I hate these guys that are out there going, oh, you can make a million dollars a year if you do this. It's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. And I get, you know, I want the money. I want the power. I want the fame. I want the girls. I want the cars. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. You got to work for it one way or the other. Why do you think these guys are pumping out, you know, live streams every day, videos every day? Because that's, that's their hustle. That's how they make their money. They're making their money off of you. And, you know, you got to find something. Uh, I had a younger guy when I was grocery shopping one day. He just uh, literally out of nowhere, this kid walks up to me, 13, 14 years old, and asks me for money. He says, oh, my mom and I are living in our car. I got, we got kicked out. You know, we just got into a wreck, this, that, and the other. Uh, do you have any money? And I, uh, I told him, I was like, yeah, I've got money, but I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to your mother. Where's your mom at? Said, oh, my mom's waiting outside in the car. So, all right, I got some more stuff to get. I'm going to walk through the store and then we'll go give the money to your mom. Right. I'm not going to give some random kid money. That's giving me a sob story. And as I was walking through the store, finishing my shopping, I, I asked him, I was like, and mind you, this was back when I didn't have any money to give. This is while I was still working retail, struggling, you know, trying to get by. And then this comes along, right? And I'm talking to the kid and he, well, how old are you? Well, I'm 14, 15, something like that. Oh, I'm still in high school. Oh, where you go to school at? Oh, I'm going to school over here. Oh, well, you know, what, you're getting close. To, I think he was getting close to, to having to pick a college. He was a junior, I think. And I asked him, oh, well, what do you want to do? He said something along the lines of, oh, I want to be a musician or I want to do this or that. And I was like, no, no, that's, that's the wrong thing to do. And I'm going to tell you why. I told him it's the wrong thing to do because if you do something that makes you money, if you, you know, sit down and you look at the fucking Google it, be like, how can I make X amount of money, right? P pick a number, any number. How can I make this much? All right, you need to do this profession or this profession or this profession, whatever. And then out of those things, pick the one that interests you. And then that's the thing you go for. Because when you're making money hand over fist to the point where you're comfortable, right? Then you can do what makes you happy. Why do you think I all this shit around here? That's stuff that makes me happy personally. And I can afford to buy it because I'm doing something that makes me money, right? Do something that makes you money. You can do what makes you happy all day long. I mean, don't kill yourself for it, but that's how it works. But, uh, you know, same thing I told him. We go outside. We walk into the parking lot. I asked him, oh, where's, where's your mom parked? And unfortunately, it was on my direction to my car. And I go out there, and sure enough, his mom is sitting in the car. And, you know, she tells me the exact same story. I was like, look, I got Sixty dollars that I just pulled out. This is, this was like the last sixty dollars that I had in my account. You know, I was like, here you go, here's sixty dollars. That's all I can help you with. You know, hopefully that gets you something, right? And uh, I just I talked to his mom for a minute. I, I asked him what happened and what was going on with with their situation, 
And, you know, she was just happy that somebody attempted to help, that person being me. And I told her, you know what? Don't worry about it. Your son, he's a, he's a good kid. He's a good guy. I like him. You know, we were talking through the store. He was walking with me. I was getting groceries. And uh, I was like, don't worry about it. You know, y'all take care. I hope things get better. And went on about my business. But something like that, it's the same sort of talk that I would have with my, my grandfather when I was younger. And it took me a very long time to get to that point where I understood what he was saying. I mean, now I'm at that point. But back then in my 20s, you know, who the fuck cares? I, I, I did my thing, you know? It was all about drinking, partying, and doing anything else. Like <laughs> anything and everything I could get my hands on. And you, know, you get older and you go, well, as you meet people, you realize that not everybody understands these things. Not everybody has somebody like I did to tell me, you know, this is what you should do. Now, whether or not you choose to do it, that's on you. But at least the the knowledge was there, right? And it, it, it's sad that you have all these young guys thinking that they're going to blow up. And if that's you, I hope it's not you watching this. You have all these guys, young guys saying, hey, I'm going to blow up. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be the next Nico. I'm going to be like fucking Neon. Jack Doherty with OnlyFans chicks and all this other shit. You don't need to do all that. Just be successful. Just be successful. If you're successful and you know you're successful, all this bullshit, somebody, and this happens to me on a daily basis, having a YouTube channel. Somebody could sit there and talk their shit, make fun of you, say whatever the fuck they want. Who gives a shit? I do what I do. I'm happy. I am successful. You can be successful. Male, and this goes for women too. You see this shit all the fucking time. Again, something else that we've talked about. All these girls getting, you know, pulled into OnlyFans. Oh, let me manage your OnlyFans by these guys. And, you know, you're going to make so much money. You're going to blow up. You're going to be next Amaranth or whoever the fuck. Oh, they are selling you so they can make money. That is not going to make you successful. It's going to make them successful. It's going to make the OnlyFans platform successful. And now you are going to be stuck with your nudes online for eternity. <laughs> is that really what you want? I mean, plain and simple. Everybody, male or female, should want to be the best version of themselves and want to do better right to be a be a fucking force of nature <laughs> in 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 your surroundings and there was for again i understand for the longest time you know my parents were just like oh he's not gonna make it oh this that and the other you know oh he's not applying himself he's not doing enough you know the 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 money isn't enough how are you gonna take care of yourself when you're older this that and the other yada 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 now I get it. Now I get it. Because I didn't want it bad enough to make it happen. You have to want it bad enough to make it happen. Nobody's going to do it for you, right? You, you see all these TikTokers talking about their, their jobs and how, uh, you know, oh, I got, I got under, uh, laid off. You know, it's the end of the world. And, oh, I can't believe I have to, I have to, put in applications to all these places. And I know there was a little lag there on the camera. I just saw it, but I can't do nothing about that. This is the way of the world, right? Nothing is ever given to you. You got to go out and get it. You got to take it. And that's it. I just summed up everything that these red pill guys should be saying in less than 20 minutes. Not asking for money. I'm not asking for likes. I'm not asking for subscriptions. I'm just telling you how it is. So, yeah, I, uh, I've been wanting to talk about this. This is, this is not me trying to brag or, you know, trying to influence people or what have you. This is just me telling you what I know. Just 
another guy telling you what I know. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If you're pissed off, you're probably going to leave a comment anyway. But uh, 